Hey, it's Dan, Director of Reverse Engineering, and I'm here for a secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we are going to put Chris's super taster abilities to the test. This is Chrissy Teigen's prosciutto wrapped stuffed chicken. We're challenging Chris to replicate this exact dish with every ingredient in just one day. He'll be able to taste it, touch it, smell it, but at no point will he be allowed to see this dish. Because he only has one day, we're gonna give him three lifelines, but using them will dock points off his final score. At the end of the day, we'll come back to see his final creation, and I'll be the judge. I smell like saucy, beefy, but like nothing's like super like leaping out. Whoa. What are you? I was so primed for this to be beef, but there's just no way. Not with like that skin. Okay, hold on. Hold on. You just calm the hell down, Dan. So there is this sort of like entire outside layer that now seems like a piece of prosciutto, I think. Which is why the skin, you know, what I believe to be the skin of the chicken wasn't tasting like anything other than just like the deepest, most richly, you know, kind of burnished skin imaginable. The way it's shredding apart is sort of freaking me out a little bit, but I think we'll go with it. I think that's just the amount of cook that's on it. And then we seem to have an opening in sort of the top of the breast where perhaps this was stuffed. So you get that like milky quality that you get normally from ricotta, but then there's something like intensified about it. God, I hope it's like Parmesan today. Lemon, oregano, garlic, parm, ricotta. It's like a stuffed chicken breast with like cheesy stuff in it. I'm not gonna say this in a bad way, okay? So like, this is not a statement full of judgment. It tastes like something that you would get at the Olive Garden. And it's actually really delightful, you know? And if you had free salad and breadsticks with it, that could be quite a nice little night. A thought is forming about what this is. Ah, there's just a lot of f***ing tomatoes on this plate. Are you getting any flavor on those tomatoes? If that's what they are. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's jammy and it's concentrated as if roasted. And there's sort of like indeterminate sort of spice kind of happening. Seems to be like a sprig of oregano. I'm gonna assume it's oregano, fresh oregano, not marjoram. Who amongst us like does not constantly get confused between marjoram and oregano? Just raise your hands, come on. No one's raising their hands, just so you know. You down. I don't know about this one, guys. Got a real bad feeling about this. All right, boneless, skinless chicken breast. Prosciutto. Also, maybe try an option just with Paris ham. Ricotta, parm, fresh oregano, garlic, lemons. There was a moment where I thought like it could be mascarpone. Olive oil. Tomatoes. Okay. Not feeling wildly confident. It seems very Italian. Italian, but like kind of Italian American. I don't know. I, who's like a really, I don't know. Like drawing a blank. I bet it's gonna be glaringly obvious at the end of it all, but it's just not right now. I have some news for you. What's that? Are you serious? That's like wrong though. That's like, that's like, what is that like? Ah, uh, okay. All right, so we're gonna do this thing. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I successfully put the oven on. Let's start by making the ricotta. 
Yeah. Ricotta is a very creamy kind of fresh cheese, but it's never gonna be like perfectly smooth. Mascarpone is a little bit more of that cream cheese. It's like, it's fattier, it's richer. I don't know, it doesn't feel as right to me. Like ricotta, it tastes like the distilled essence of a glass of milk, like in there. Assuming it's garlic and it's not like onion, but I'm pretty sure. Let's do a little bit of Parmesan. It's gonna give us the kind of intensity we're looking for in here. Should we um, throw some zest in there and a little juice? I just felt like there was a little bit of brightness in there. Let's get some salt and pepper. Oregano is intense. A little goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, I could be wrong. I'm gonna taste good. Let's cook a little like scrap of each meat. See what we like flavor-wise. So I've got prosciutto, you know, a leg of ham that's just salted and aged. And then I have a, um, you know, more of like a boiled or steamed ham kind of given more of like a wet cure. And my money's on the prosciutto, but you know, that's why you play the game. Yeah, so like look at like how the boiled ham, it still stays pretty pliable. It's not bad, but there's a lot of sugar in this. I mean, this feels like so readily identifiable as like some kind of crispy prosciutto. I think I gotta go prosciutto. Next big question. Are we trying to make a hole and then like get the filling down in there, which seems like incredibly difficult? Or are we butterflying the chicken breast open and then kind of laying some of the filling in there? From what I remember, it's like, it didn't simply start coming out of the side of the chicken breast. We, we seem, seem to have, have an opening, opening where perhaps, perhaps this was stuffed. stuffed. So maybe we need to, tunnel. I start with the knife and then I use the chopstick to kind of like open it up. I mean, think of like the poor prep cook at the Olive Garden who's got to do like 50 of these every night, you know? Summer, do you by any chance have a Ziploc? I feel like at the Olive Garden, they've probably got like some like machine that like auto fills them. And it like, and I'm now going to insert our ricotta cheese filling. This is actually weirdly satisfying. Have you used this method for anything else? <laughs> <laughs> you mean like, <laughs> like, what are we talking about here, Dan? <laughs> There's like actually quite a bit of filling in there. <laughs> yeah. So I've got prosciutto. This feels like something to me. It doesn't feel wrong. I'm gonna try to brown and then flip it. Tomatoes are in, oregano's in, and then it's gonna go into the oven. And I have a feeling, I mean, this could take a good 20 minutes or so. Oh boy. We got a little spooge, that's fine. I guess I just never really stopped to think about what this dish actually looks like. Something like that, I don't know. It seems really wrong looking at it right now, I'll tell you that much. I, I can imagine in the scoring later, Dan's gonna be like, oh, you missed like 20 ingredients. Cause there's like a pinch of this there and a pinch of that over there. In terms of ingredients, I would give myself a 78. Appearance, uh, I would maybe say 80. I don't know, there was something about like the liquid. Yeah, maybe it's like slightly bigger than what I tasted, but shape-wise, yeah. Taste, I think it wants to be a little bit cheesier, like meaning like even more Parmesan. Taste, I'd maybe give myself an 80 again. Technique I feel maybe best about, I would maybe do an 85 just because, you know, a prosciutto wrapped, filled chicken breast. I mean, no big deal, right? I mean, I think that's where we're at. So that puts me um, at a B minus or an 81. Thinking back, I was just so utterly confused by that big lump of protein and kind of what was happening with it. What are you? I'm really looking forward to the second tasting today. So the plan is don't get distracted. We're gonna go in, deconstruct it and get out. I feel like I was short tomatoes on mine. 
my inclination is to say that there is not an actual distinct sauce happening here. Nobody's like snuck some vermouth in there in a totally sneaky and not at all fair way. Yeah, so it feels like there is a hole. So I feel like piping was the way to go. Oh, uh, I can't tell if it like split open because it's cooked. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it was piped in there. I still feel like ricotta plus parm is the closest mirror to what I, I, I feel is there. I don't know if there were another cheese, I'm not sure what it would be. Hold on. Is it bacon? It's so thin though. I don't know, we're gonna need to get like a bacon option if we have it, or like at least get some prosciutto in there. All right, I've sort of gone as far as I can with this. Dan has informed me uh, slash reminded me that I have the option of exercising a lifeline here for three points. He will tell me uh, like an ingredient that I'm missing, hopefully kind of starting with order of importance. You know what I mean? Like you're not just gonna give me some like bullshit, right? No, we'll give you a good one. Okay, all right, I, I would like to exercise a lifeline. Give me an ingredient, please, Dan. Oh. Cream cheese, not ricotta? <laughs> bag Danny, I cannot <laughs> believe you. I said Olive Garden, did I not? <laughs> In the tuna tostada, like when Summer handed me the soy sauce, like a little piece of me died. Really? On that fish, there is soy. Like right there in the trailer, you know, doing lots with Andy, listening to Black Sabbath. You know what I mean? Like this, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Summer, do you have any very thinly sliced bacon in there? Or do you know? I was reading pieces of crispy prosciutto but a bacon this thin? Yeah, it could be that, sure. Wow, it was like cut with a laser, you know? I don't think it's only cream cheese. There's a curdiness to what's inside the chicken. So like, I don't know, I'm still, maybe I'll go for a mix. Another half cup ricotta. And then I'm gonna do my parm. It's just building up the richness. So a little salt and pepper. Gotta get some garlic in there. Yes. With the bacon, yes. I still feel like piping is the way to go, but Dan will be the judge. Also wanna try laying out the prosciutto on some plastic wrap, just to kind of like really like adhere it. Tomatoes are in, oregano's in. I feel like it looks pretty good. So this is like version two of the salt and boca situation. I feel like I kind of succeeded, I don't know. I've never felt less clear about like what you would call this or who did it. Ingredients, like with the bacon being in there now and the cream cheese, like where was I at before? 78. So maybe I'll bump myself to an 82 on ingredients. On taste, I feel pretty good. Taste, I would probably, I would give this 85. Technique, I feel like the correct techniques are represented here, so I might go like 88. Appearance, it wasn't really apparent. So yeah, 82. So that puts me at an 84 average, a solid B. Um, so I went from B minus to B, at least in my own mind. And um, I think Dan is gonna be the final judge of that. A little bit terrified. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Cool. It's a very anemic clap, Dan. Very anemic. We should probably start with a, a hello. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. Yeah. How about you? We spent the day together. I got to watch you make this thing before my eyes. Yeah. And it feels like cheating that you get to judge me now. I just want you to know that regardless of what happens next, at least we know you got cream cheese, right? <laughs> Who do you think made this dish? What do you think you have in front of you? Honestly, I have no idea. I would have called this some version of a salt and boca, but does that name even resonate for a lot of folks? Well, I have a name for you that does resonate with a lot of folks. Are you ready? 
Okay, so do I, do I, am I doing the reveal? You're doing the reveal. Chris, may I present to you a dish from the esteemed chef, Chrissy Teigen's prosciutto wrapped stuffed chicken. What? This is a dish of Chrissy's that picked up a lot of traction on the internet. It was in the center of the plate the whole time? Surrounded by a ring of tomatoes. I tried to get you there so many times. Dude, you, you could have given me a map and a compass and I would like be just like flailing around like lost in the woods still. Let's get into the filling, shall we? You went for a mixture of cream cheese, ricotta, and Parmesan, is that right? Yes. And we gave you the cream cheese for a three point penalty. Oh. Ricotta, no. Parmesan, no. Stop. You were looking for a little tanginess there. That was coming from goat cheese and the cream cheese. Goat cheese? Goat cheese. I don't know, it was not a pronounced goaty flavor at all. No goaty flavor. No, none. I'm telling you it is somewhat goaty. It's, it's really not goaty. Moving forward, <laughs> you had some herbs in there on your first pass, you put oregano in there, and then you took it out. I took it out. Correct on the first pass. It should have been in there along with some thyme. Oh, well, you know what's really funny, Dan? There was a little bit of the first mixture that I added the second mixture to, so technically there was oregano in there. So we're good. Oh, yeah? So you want me to count that? I'm, I'm flailing here, man. Go ahead. You did get the bacon. Although she doesn't actually mix in the bacon with her filling, she sort of sprinkles it in after. And we'll get to that in just a second. Why, she, she butterflies it? We'll, we'll get to that. Oh. <laughs> what Chrissy does, she takes a meat mallet and pounds it. All that filling gets spread onto the chicken. It all gets rolled up like a oh, little- It's rolled. It's rolled. It's rolled. rolled. Let's take a look at a cross section, see if you like sort of achieve the same results with your piping situation. Lost a lot of filling on this one as the chicken tightened up as it cooked. How's Chrissy's looking? So he has like a little bit more filling that stayed in there. Very solid. That's a nice looking roll. Okay, I can get a little goat. Get a little goat. I was off. What are you gonna do? All right, Chris, are you ready for your scores? I'm ready. Let's start with ingredients. There were some misses. Um, Definite. Couple, couple cheese stumbles perhaps. Um, dairy. Time, oregano. Dairy. Although I think I will generously call ingredients an 80. That seems generous and very nice of you. I am not in the same city as you right now, so I can actually taste this. The ingredients that you had would probably get you most of the way. I'm gonna throw a number out there, 83. Yeah, I would, I would have said 80. That goat cheese. <laughs> That's, that's, that's kind of a, a big miss in this one. Speaking of big misses, technique. Chris, I will never forget watching you shove a chopstick into a piece of chicken to make a cavity to then It just pipe made with cheese. sense. This might hurt a little bit. I'm gonna give you a 69. <laughs> Tough but fair. You're Tough right, fair. it does hurt a little bit. It hurts yeah. a lot. But we're gonna balance it out with appearance. Individually, your piece of chicken looked great and your tomatoes look great, and you look great. I'm gonna give you an 87 on appearance. Okay, that seems generous. I also, I can't have you hate me for the next five episodes of this, we have to shoot. <laughs> that averages out to an 80. You use the lifeline, takes you to a 77, and because I like you, I'm gonna give you a three point bonus for the time that I enjoyed with you today, and take you back to an 80 for a B minus. I can't put you in that, in that C territory. It just would not be right. I better go out and get a meat mallet because I don't even have one. <laughs> a little more sense than the whole chopstick thing. We can just not talk about that again. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna roll it back in slow motion of you jamming that chopstick into the chicken hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we learned you can't bring a paring knife and a chopstick to a meat mallet fight. But yeah, I think um, Chrissy Teigen definitely uh, Definitely beat me on this one. I can still see Dan. Okay. Yeah. Because when I see Dan. Well, this, well, I mean, you know, well. Anyway, like you, Dan. You're great.